Yes. 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 We're back. <laughs> Model Making Guru is sponsored by emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Dot Guru here. Hello, hello, and welcome back. Welcome back to my part work build series of Diagostini's Build Your Own X-Wing, where we're gonna, over the course of about two years, build a 118 scale, as in huge, X-Wing fighter. Now, if you're wondering why it's been three months since the first episode, when we had issues one to three, I was contacted by a third party PR company to ask me if I'd be interested in doing this collaboration. I'm not subscribed to this. I'm, in all transparency, I'm not paying for this subscription. It's being sent to me by the goodness of Diagostini. So I'm being provided with this, this part work. They contacted me and said, would you like to do it? I said, it's not something I want to do right now. I can't afford it. And they said, no, no, we're gonna send it to you. So they sent me issues one to three and I filmed the last episode. I was like, brilliant. Then I heard nothing for like two months. Uh, I didn't know what was going on. I hadn't heard back from the PR company. So eventually I just contacted Diagostini directly and the PR company and said, listen guys, is this going ahead? I've only got issues one to three. I've not heard back from you. If it's not going ahead, it's fine. But I'd just like to know so I can plan my schedules accordingly. The next thing I know, issues one to two turn up again, this time directly from Diagostini, not from some packaging company down south, which is where the first lot came from. And then just the other day, issues three and four turned up. So I'm going to make the assumption that Diagostini have very, very kindly uh, set me up with an account and are sending me this each month. I don't know if I'm on the regular package or the premium package with the extra bits and bobs. I don't know. I don't know which one I'm going to get. So we'll wait and see. If I get the extra bits and bobs, that's brilliant. But if not, it's not a biggie. But hopefully I will, because then I can get the pilot. So yes, we're going to crack on now. In the last episode, we did issues one to three. And in this latest package that I received just a couple of days ago, I got issues three and this issue four. So I'm not going to go over issue three. But before we get going, let's have a look at what we get in issue four. Now, obviously, the first thing you get with this issue, issue four, is all the parts. And in this episode, we're going to do a bit more to the cockpit floor. We're going to finish off the one laser cannon that we've built so far. And I think we're going to be finishing off R2-D2 as well. So I'm not going to go into the detail on those. We'll go through those as we use them. So if you are subscribed to this part work, you will have actually received issues three and four in your package this month. I'm a bit out of step because I got issues one, two and three way back when I first started because it was before the subscription had actually fully gone live. So I've already covered issue three. So this time I'm just going to look at issue four and then in the next episode it'll be issues five and six and then the one after that seven and eight will be up to date then hopefully. I think that's it's got a very strange structure this part work. It's like two issues every five weeks or something straight. It's not quite a normal four issues a month kind of scenario. So it's a bit weird. So we're going to look at issue four. Now it's the same format as all the other magazines we've had so far. Only difference is there's only one article, one fluff article in the front of the magazine this month. And that is just an article about how John Dykstra and a couple of other guys from Industrial Life and Magic basically completely invented the computer controlled motion control rig for having a camera repeat movements over and over again. Because when you film a miniature for any kind of film, you're not just doing one single pass of a camera. You've got to do multiple passes, at least you did in those days. A black and white one for matting, a color one for the model itself, a third one or a beauty pass for lighting effects, and probably lots of others for different, different things that you want to match up. And they all have to match up perfectly. So you have to make sure each time the camera moves around the model, it follows the same pan and tilt and roll and you're every single time and they invented the computer control system because apparently they had access to cheap memory so that was the easiest way to do it so a little article there then we have of course all the buildy buildy which we shall go through in a moment so i won't dwell on that so that's the magazine for this month now of course that's not all you get we do also get now i don't think this is a premium thing i think this is just open anybody who subscribes gets this uh, on their second delivery so i think this is one of the generic if you've subscribed, you get this. But we get some very quick, very simple, but rather nice art cards or small sort of A4, not really A4, A5 maybe. They're quite big, uh, but, but art posters. And we just get three lovely shots of X-Wing. Uh, in Well, two in the space and one is a close-up of the cockpit. However, it should be noted, these are computer renderings. These are full color 3D graphic renderings. Uh, I'm going to assume they are renderings by Diagostini when they were putting everything together for the model. They might actually be 
uh, stills of the 3D model that was used in the remaster of Star Wars A New Hope? I don't know. It does say, uh, let's have a look, it's on the bottom. Copyright and trademark 2019 Lucasfilm Limited. So these may well be renders of the 3D CGI model that was used in the remaster of New Hope. Might well be. It's kind of low quality compared to a model you might see in a modern day computer game. The textures are a bit low res, so it might be quite old. These are all just flat textures. No three, no like uh, bump mapping or anything like that. So this might be quite old, but it looks nice. You get, so you basically get through, that's not, I like that one. You get three nice art cards. I'm not going to put my nose up at that. Maybe that, one, that one's not going to go anywhere. These two, I quite like those. They're going to go on the wall somewhere. So we get those as well. So that's everything we get with issue four. Let's get on with the buildy buildy. Okay, so the first step is to do a bit more work on the cockpit floor. Uh, now, if you remember this bit we made in the last episode, and it's solid metal, yeah, it's very heavy. Uh, so we're going to need a few bits. Now, we do get the sidewalls for it in the kit this month. Now, I would recommend when you get these plastic clamshell bits with the parts each month, there are going to be in some of these magazines tiny, tiny parts. And it's very easy to take this off, throw it away, and realise later on there's a tiny part sticking with static cling. So before you do anything, take the clamshell apart and just look inside and make sure that there's nothing in there hiding, little tiny plastic parts or anything like screws. Now there are two bags of bits. We've got some little tiny clear parts for R2-D2 and three screws and they were stuck in there. But sometimes you get little tiny parts, especially for R2, that will just cling to the plastic. So don't just throw this in the bin, check first. Now I've got a little glass container here. I'm going to put that in there and I'm going to guarantee I don't lose those. So the first bits we're going to need, we're going to need these two big metal chunks here, these two heavy boys, uh, and we're going to need two of these screws. Now it does give you three screws in the set, but they always tend to give you a spare. Diagostini are very good at giving you a spare screw just in case. So what I'm going to do is get my Sharpie stabby knife. I'm just going to carefully open this little puppy here. And then we get those screws in there. Just have some little container or something. If you're a proper hardcore crafty person, then you might have uh, a little sort of magnetic thing to put screws and things on. That's cool if you've got that. I'm going to put my helmet of seeing on so I can see. Hang on. Helmet of seeing, it's my Optivisor. <sighs> I'm old, what can I say? Yes, if you're quite a crafty person with the handicraft and stuff, you may already have some little magnetic thing to put these in. If so, brilliant. If not, just have something so you can't just go ping and knock them everywhere. So let's have a look and see what the destructions say. Uh, it says, I'll put that up there so I can see it. Uh, one of the frames has an R for right. Uh, and it's that one there, you can see it says R for right on. That was a rubbish joke. I don't even know why I bothered making it. Uh, has an alpha right molded on the triangular brace near one end. To position the frame alongside the base this way around. Uh, like that, was it? Like this. I think that's the one. Yes, there we go. Uh, fit the side frame into the notches in the upright frames. Notches here, you see? Am I, am I reading that wrong? I'm just guessing here and assuming. Uh, no, it means, it means, it means I'm an idiot. What am I doing? I'm not even paying attention. Right, so that goes there. Uh, hang on, hang on a moment. I'm looking at the diagram and not, the, th the thing you'll know about me if you know my stuff is I suck at building anything. You can give me the most obvious instructions in the world and I'll still mess it up. There we go, right. So I have to say this looks a bit rough and ready, this metal piece, it's obviously cast, but it's a bit, it's a bit rough around the edges, but it's not the end of the world. That's not really fitting. So that, oh, I see that needs to go in there. I get you. Right, so there we go. So hole, hole, tiny screw. So you will need for this uh, and a screwdriver. I'm ironically going to use the one that came with my uh, Diagostini Millennium Falcon because it's a really nice screwdriver, bizarrely. It's also a, just a little bit magnetical and it does seem to fit most screws. It's also got a spinny bit on the end so you can turn it around. So if you just happen to have done that Millennium Falcon build, uh, and got past episode six, perhaps. Yes, I know, I know. Uh, then, you know, you might have the same screwdriver. I kept mine. It's a brilliant little screwdriver. It gets used a lot. So that goes in there. This is not the, oh, there we go. There we go. I was going to say it's not the best fit in the world, but it does fit now. So that goes there. Screw that in there like that, you'll see. 
Now you might be might be sitting there thinking, God, Fox, you're making the right hash of this. You're fumbling around like a spoon. Don't forget, I'm trying to do it on camera. I'm conscious of not leaning forward too much because it makes my microphone go dead loud. And I've got to get it on in shot. So I'm doing my best with the camera on. But I am I am that bad at building this. This is why I always say I'm a painter, not a builder. Uh, repeat repeat tips. Well, words. I'll get. I'll, I'll start that sentence again. Repeat steps two to four to fit the L for left frame on the other side. So this, yeah, you see it like that. This goes like this, you'll see. Have a little screw. I'll still have a little screw now for you. There we go. Oh, you're watching live screw it, and I'm not even gonna make that joke, actually. Let's just not make that joke. Oh, just, I am I am ham fisted. My fists are entirely made of the ham. Yes, I am. I am rubbish at building. I can't. Mm. Why are you a... Let's do it that way. Let's go stay in place, and isn't it? There we go. I, I'm the worst builder in the world. That's why I don't enjoy building. I enjoy painting, but I don't enjoy building models. This kind of stuff, because it's mostly screwing and things like that. I can do that. So I may look a bit cack-handed, but at least I'm getting it done. I'm enjoying it. So we're going to tighten that quite a lot. Zip. I'm not going to tighten it too much because I don't want to start threading screws and shearing screw heads. I do have a habit of doing that. There we go. So I'm not, as soon as I get any slippage, I'm just going to stop turning it. That's still a bit loose. We need to get that in there. You'll see there's little pegs on these cross beams here. They go into these little holes. When I was trying to get it in without having the screw in, it didn't make any sense. Uh, but when I actually thought about it, it made sense. So there we go. That is now two side walls it's loose there doesn't seem to go in at the end here but I'm gonna guess there's other things that are gonna go in here it's gonna screw to and also you probably need some flexibility here to allow you to do other things as well so that is that that is that step let's go on to the next step which is small and fiddly and it's R2 McD2 okay so the next step is to finish off R2D2 now I did film a couple of bits that didn't come out so I'll have to explain them to you but these are all the parts we had our left over uh, in the first episode then we just glued the bits onto the dome we built the legs there's still a big seam line on there but ignore that we'll sort that out later and we've got the front of the body uh, in this issue we get some clear bits and we get the other half of the body and we get this tube this tube this stick which is going to be uh, the bit that the middle foot goes on and also the bit that makes the head rotate now uh, I did stick you also got in the first in the first couple of issues of the magazine you've got this little plastic white bit here that you need to jam onto the end of the led in the right leg uh, now i did do that on camera but the film didn't come out so i've had to refilm this bit oh. so you need to jam that on just be careful it only goes most of the way down because there's a little lip at the bottom of the led and that stops it going any further and you need to make sure you do it that way so the big fat bit is at the top and the thin bit is at the bottom and just jam it down be very careful you don't want to damage this led or the wires in there now the idea is uh, that this is the right leg which is on his right so on your left they don't tell you but this is the back panel it says attach these to the back panel this is the back panel the one that comes in issue four this is the front panel if you don't know that if you, if you can't tell the back from the front of, of r2d2 you haven't ever watched star wars why are you making this kit i don't know i've got more star wars but that's the front so put that to one side this is the back what we need to do is you need to get the leg in there like that you'll see and then you have to squiggle the wire down and loop it around a bit because this little part here is the light for the top of the head and that sits in that little recess there and if i try and jiggle everything because oh, it's not it's not going to work because this is i've been trying to do this on camera and it's just all exploding and falling apart so let's just get that in there for now and get that in there just to show you demonstrate can you go in there no that's just oh. it requires 32 hands i have to tell you this i don't want to glue anything yet because i'm loath to loath to glue anything just yet i made that mistake in the first issue and had to go and rebuy issues one two and three just to uh, fix that mistake so yeah look upside down your spoon loath to glue anything just yet so what will basically happen is you will have if i can push that back down a bit uh, you will have you'll also put this leg in as well and there'll be this central tube that'll go down the middle you'll have the light here and this light will basically shine upwards and into the bonds 
and that will shine through all the little clear bits that are his lights and when he's in the back of the x-wing he'll move a little bit and the light will shine through however if you shine a torch on this plastic that you'll see it's quite transparent the light does come through the plastic and it's quite visible in fact what i can do is let me just put that there for a second with this magazine you do get the battery pack the test power pack so we're going to put two AAA batteries it's AAA batteries it doesn't tell you in there but the flat bit goes on the spring it's like that and like that with the batteries in it's time to test that everything is the right way around in R2's foot remember you put these little metal plates in his foot they need to be the right way around if they're not the wrong way around you're not going to get any power to him so get your battery pack it's a little testing pack grippy thing for sliding is there there's the lid flat like that and you just need to sit R2 on that plate it has to be this way around so there's the front of him there's the back put his foot like that and voila i can blow the ccd chip in my phone there we go that works perfectly so i've got those two metal plates the right way around which is really handy because i can't remember if i glue this or not so when you're making your r2 do not glue this leg at all because if you've got those plates the wrong way around what you need to do is pop the leg apart turn the plates around and do this test again there you go so we can see that lights up but hopefully what you can see as well maybe probably not in this light but if i was to turn the lights off you'd probably see there's a heck of a lot of light leak uh, through the plastic itself you can see coming through the plastic you, you probably can't let me turn the lights off hang on see if that helps lights off lights off lights off lights off so let's give it another try oh, it's dark it's dark in here now so there you go so i don't know if you'll see but you can see there hopefully light coming through the plastic that basically to me to my eyes his entire body is slightly glowy because it's really thin white plastic so but we need to we need to do something about that so let me put the lights back on i need that sort of light coming on sound from the start of captain scarlet that's what i need so put that battery pack to one side you're going to use that again in future to test things as well so keep it to one side so what we need to do is we need to plug that light leak very very easy what i'm going to do is i'm not going to glue anything in like i said i don't want to glue anything in just yet i'm going to i might have to glue this bit on because it's doing my brain in right you stay there um, now i've seen people paint the entire inside of the r2 unit and everything else but there's actually a quicker and hopefully simpler way you don't need to do that all you need to do is I might have to glue this in actually I might have to glue this uh, first thing you need to do is should I just glue this in yeah just glue this in this kit is going to be mostly ABS plastic if not all ABS plastic to me extra thin won't work on it it won't stick because it needs polystyrene so what you need to do is use either something like plastic magic which is a, a very thin extra thin like glue but it glues ABS together or for some things super glue now I don't want to make a big mess so we need a bit of plastic we need and cocking tail and your fart and stick uh, and we need if i can if i can uh where's that is that thin or that thick that's super thin i don't want that there is my there it is i'm going to use this stuff it's actually I, that was thin ca glue ca glue is also super glue or cyanoacrylate i use the thicker stuff because it doesn't run, run everywhere just put a dot on there like that uh, if you are getting super glue from a, a tube like this before you put the lid on just wipe off the excess glue helps prevent the lid actually sealing itself shut i appreciate the camera is quite close up here it's probably the worst possible thing i could have done but i didn't know i was gonna have to do this so what i'm gonna do now is take the back panel here put a little bit of the super glue inside there not a lot i don't need to put a lot on there just a little tiny bit and then very carefully I can mount that in there like that just hold it for a second you can blow on it because the carbon dioxide in your breath might help activate it in fact what I will do is I'll turn it around so it's sideways the light fitting is sideways this gives me a bit of extra if I put that sideways it gives me a bit of extra room to move things in put that there you can get um, fixers that or accelerators that accelerate super glue fixing quite fast um but i haven't got any 
So I'm just going to blow on it. But a little breath of carbon dioxide can sometimes speed the process up. So there we go, that's on. Like I say, you, you can't use Tamir Extra Thin, so keep that in mind. I wasn't going to glue this, but I need to for the next step. So what we need to do is basically, if you remember, the light shone through and everything was glowing. I've seen people paint the entire interior. You can do, there's no harm in that, but you don't need to because the only place that light is coming through, it's coming through this white plastic washer that's mounted it in place and it's coming through the little bit of clear plastic there that's on the bottom of the LED. So all we actually need to do is really paint that little bit of the clear LED and this plastic washer. That's only really the bit we need to paint. Oh, I think, anyway, this is what I'm hoping, because I don't really want to have to paint the whole thing inside. It, it's not a problem, it's just a bit of a pain in the bum. So, that's going to go on there like that, that's fine. So what I'm going to do is, I've got myself some, you can use any old black paint, but I've got some primer. Uh, I'm, I've decided to paint with primer, because it's bare plastic. Paint tends to come off bare plastic. It doesn't grip very well, so I may as well use primer, which is designed to grip the plastic. So I've got some ultimate primer. I'm going to give it a good shake. Checking, 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 checking. And all I need to do is do it on this thing again. Now I will get myself a crappy old brush that I don't need to keep. Uh, this one will do. I'll get myself a little touch of paint. I need a lot. Little touch of the primer. There we go. I've dribbled some, so I'll just wipe that off with a tissue. And there we go. And all I'm going to do is very very quickly carefully uh, I'm going to get some of this on the clear part here now it doesn't matter you don't have to be careful you're just covering up it doesn't matter if it goes into the LED plastic housing tubing it doesn't matter because it can't do it any harm I'm just going to paint that. You want to make sure you don't get it on the actual lens itself because that would kind of suck. So just carefully go around the edge. Now it does look a little bit transparent so that's fine. We might need to do two coats. But you can be as careless as you like in here because this is never going to be seen by human being eyes. Okay so now that's been done. I'll show you in a minute. That's the light from above and here's the light from the side. I'm showing you are too. You're not seeing it. Yes, if I turn them upside down, you get a little tiny bit of light leaking through the bottom. You're never going to see that. But from the sides, nothing at all. As if by magic, just to make sure it is on. There you go, see? There's the light from above. So, awesome. So let me turn all the lights back on again. Hang on. And that one. I have to make little light noises. It's kind of the law. So let's take a look inside. Dead simple, like I said, all we did was, if I can get it apart again, just paint black all round the bulb and the fitment there. You had to do about three coats just to make sure I got the very edge of the clear part here. Because when I did a couple of coats and put the light on first, I could see light shining down through the very edge of the clear part. So three or four coats should get that covered. Don't be shy, just be generous with it. Basically, it's just blocking the light. It's called light blocking. You'll see it referred to in kits with electrics and lights. It's just light blocking. Um, like I say, some people paint the whole interior. You can do, but it's just the bit where the light's leaking you need to cover. So now that light just goes up and that's what we want. So uh, next we need to put in this part here. Now this will all fall apart horrendously as I go along. Uh, with this part, this is the central tube. That needs to go on there so that that lines up there and that lines up there need to make sure this cable's out of the way let me just push that over there see that needs to sit like that uh, we have to then i'm not looking at the right page am i i'm looking at the right page. yes there we go that sits on here like this now it's very important uh, that that falls out I meant to say something it's very important and this is something i did earlier on that i haven't shown you because the, the film didn't work I want to be able to take this apart again if I need to. I'm not going to be fixing any of the seam lines right now. I'm going to get the whole thing built, the whole ship, and then when we've done that, then I'll go back and start looking at filling up seam lines, fixing things, and doing a full repaint. So there's no point doing any seam line fixing right now. But what I've done is to make sure I can take it apart again, because this does fit really tightly on there. It's a hard fought thing to get this on top of that. What I did was I snipped off the end of these pegs here. You can see there's a little snip. I've got some snippers. 
and I cut off a 45 degree, just the very tip at 45 degrees, like that, just to make them more of a pointy shape. And I also hollowed out these, the holes that they go in. I just widened them out with a knife blade. I went like that and I got it in and I went do, 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 do on both of those. Unfortunately, the film didn't survive, I'm afraid, so that's why I've had to refilm this bit. So that means these holes are a little wider and cutting off the little 45 degree snip at the end of these posts just means that when you put it together, it's not such a sort of tight, airtight seal. There's less surface area, so you can pull it apart again. And so if you make gumpler, you'll know this technique. It's how you can build a gumpler and then take it all apart again to paint it. You just snip the ends off and widen the holes a little bit and it, it, it'll fit together fine by itself, but it'll be a bit loose and wobbly. But when we finish and we get to the end of this build, we can glue all the things together. I don't want to glue anything for now in case I need to come back and do something later on or do any repairs. Of course, right now, we don't know what's going to be in future issues. So I don't want to make any assumptions. I fell foul of this in the first episode when I glued the, oh, I think it's coming out, when I glued the laser cannons together. And then I realised there was a problem and we've got lighting to put in them anyway. So yeah, I made that mistake once. So that goes on there and this sits on top like that. And at violins, we have an R2-D2. Now these legs are a bit wibbly wobbly. The, the bit that goes into the end of the leg, the little sort of bit with the crossbar that holds it in place, is very wibbly wobbly. But the thing is at the end of the day, he's going to sit in the back of the X-Wing. And if he's not going to be in the X-Wing, he's just going to be sat on the ground. So it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. If you wanted to at the end, you could glue all this together and it'd be fine. So there we go. So make sure this leg's on the on his right leg or your left side is the power leg. And just to double check again, make sure power brick that way. Again, this is the test power brick. Test power brick, that flat, kaplink, light comes on. If that didn't work, you'd have to take those metal plates out and then a hair on my finger and then turn them around because it's the polarity if it doesn't work don't panic you've not broken the wire you might just have these two metal plates the wrong way around so double check that later Whee! so that's that bit what's next next we need to uh, get all these clear bits out so let me get these all ready what i'm going to do to make sure i don't screw it up i have in my hand a piece of tamir masking tape which I'm going to fold over into a loop. I'm going to fold over into a loop, he said. Don't make a liar out of me. Like that, I'm going to put it there. And we're going to lay these clear parts out in the same order, if I can actually see them with my old man eyes. Get those out there. Dingle, 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 dingle. Right, so we have the first one is this one, I think, uh, I think. Then we have the big long red one, who are, these really are tiny. Then we have one that's kind of a square thing, which I think is, hang on, you come back here. Uh, there's this one, squareness. Then we have this big fat red mushroom big fat red mushroom then we have a big fat white mushroom big fat white mushroom and then this little tiny wedge be careful it will ping off now it does tell me in the instructions that only four of uh, one two three four only five of these are used right now the other one is used for the laser cannon and i didn't realize that so i'm going to very carefully lift this up i shouldn't have done that really but i'm going to put this over here where it's not in my way keep them on the tape so that's just them down there so the first one we need to do is the square clear display lens which is this puppy here the third one along press it into the square hole and I hope you can see all of this the square hole at the front of R2D2's head which is there so let's get this in oops let's drop it now these will be acrylic so I'm really hoping I don't have to glue any of these in it's going to, I'm going to try and not knock in the camera with my headset. That's square. It does seem to have a specific orientation. That goes in maybe like that. There we go. I click and that goes in. That's not going to come out. That is not going to come out ever. Oops, scratchy. That's not ever going to come out. I'm happy with that. This is the little tiny mushroom, little tiny round one. Oh god, that could have pinged off anywhere then. 
See, when you're doing this at home, you can take your time. When I'm doing it on here, oh, I can knock that camera again. I'm doing it on the telly box, so I've got to not take hours and hours to do it. This is really fiddly. I try not to just be silent because there we go. Now that one is not the tightest fit. Hmm. So I might need to put a touch of something in there just to glue it in place. Uh, I don't want to be using super glue because that could mist it up and affect its transparency. But what we can use is you can either use I've got some Revell Contactor Clear, which or you could want to you can use Micro Crystal Clear. These are basically what's called canopy glues. They're effectively like PVA glue. If you've just got normal PVA or Elmer's glue, you can use that as well. Basically, they're glues that dry clear, but unlike polystyrene cements and super glues, uh, they don't cloud up clear pots. They're basically invisible. And if you're putting a canopy on a plane, for example, you'd use canopy glue. This is what these are. What we're going to do is we're going to get the micro crystal clear. I'm going to bring back that little plastic lid that I put somewhere. There we go. Bring back this lid. We're going to have a dot of this on this surface just to I need a I need a something to spoon it out with spoon let's get some of this on here get a little bit on there don't need a lot well I can use a lot if I want I suppose <sighs> right so that's there I've got the red one in so what I'm gonna do is oh it's come out again Right, little, little, I nearly swore then, little minx. Come here, you go in there like that. See, when I watched Chris over at Gross Models do this, because Chris is doing this build as well. When I watched him do this, he didn't have all this faffing about. But then again, he does like repair clocks and watches for a living. So, so that's going to go on the end there. Hopefully, I mean, it does take a long time to dry, but hopefully it'll seal itself over the end. And hold it in place a bit better but not it'll dry transparent so hopefully it'll still shine the light through basically it's just like a crystal clear glue hence the name crystal clear or micro crystal clear it's designed to be clear so it's just like adding a bit of extra plastic on the end so I've got this little burger here which I think goes that way yeah Chris did this and he did it in like about five minutes blip blop blip blop blip got all the bits in and I was like oh you can tell he's got glue on my hand. You can tell he's a, he repairs watches for a living. Because he has no problems. This isn't the right around now. I've got no way to grab it and turn it around and reorient it. Oh, I don't think. Push it back out again needs to go it's difficult to tell which way around it's supposed to go it doesn't actually show you in the magazine I think it needs to go that way it's hard for me to explain to you it's got an angle to it and there's no way to know what the correct angle actually is I think it's probably given the fact that it's that angle there it probably needs to match that so oh this is a nightmare this wouldn't be a nightmare if I wasn't trying to film it at the same time for you. There we go, I think. Yes, there we go. Okay, it does stick out a little bit, but that's fine. So what we'll do, we'll get another touch of the crystal clear or PVA glue, which is your preference. Put that there. I'll do the same on this one. This little square one isn't going to come out ever, but I'll put some on there as well. Now the beauty with these like PVA based crystal clear canopy glues is that um, they're not permanent. They don't change the plastic at all. All that actually happens is they just sort of, it's like a, um, they, they grip them a bit and they, it's like almost like PVA kind of thing. They, they squeeze around them and hold them in place and they have some stick to them, but they're not chemically changing it. So they will grip it quite nicely. They can be quite tough, but if you ever need to take the parts out, you can, you can just peel it off. Uh, let's have a look now the red one 
the orange display lens, I should say. That needs to go on the back here. Oops. That red one's staying in now, you see, because of that glue. Yes, yes. So the orange one. This is probably horrible for you to watch. Chris is probably pulling his hair out right now watching me do this. Because he does this for a living. So. <laughs> well, I mean, not this. I mean, he does tiny things for a living. He works on tiny watches and clocks. So, for once, Chris, you get to shout at me for doing things wrong. <laughs> That's little orange one in there. A bit more of the crystal clear. Now, you don't need to do this crystal clear or PVA glue, whatever you... I mean, say, dead simple, PVA glue if you got it. That'd be fine. You don't need to do this. Most of these are fitting and fine, but that little red one, that did come out every five seconds, so you might want to do this. Uh, and last of all, take the thin clear display lens number six and press it into the slot in the side. Now this is the one I've been dreading because it's this tiniest piece. You, you probably can't even see on camera. And it's got the stupidest design shape and it's gonna just be hell on earth. Uh, this needs to go, where does this go? This is goes in here. So as far as I can see, you won't see this bit's a square with a little shark fin sticking up. Shark fin on the left, straight bit here, it's like that shape. That's the way it needs to go. This is going to ping off, I can guarantee it. It's going to fall off and nothing else. Also, I can't see, there we go, I think that's it. I think the, the straight edge is the one that needs to stick out. So I'm very, very carefully, drop it, very carefully drop it. Oh. I knew this episode wouldn't be a quick five minute job. <laughs> uh, 18 minutes I've been doing this for now, for, there may be some editing. Come on, right, how am I gonna get this on and in now? I need to go like that, that's there on my finger. Let's just jam it in with the finger and see what happens. It misses. He shoots, he misses. And all the while in my head, I've got the theme tune from I Claudius. Just, there you go, what can you say, huh? Oh, that's in. <gasps> Miraculoso. So I'm going to get some PVA on that. Some crystal clear, whatever you want to call it. Not that much, maybe. Just enough to get into the gap. Hold it in place. There we go. Okay, so while all that's drying, we'll crack on with the last step, and that is to sort out the laser cannon. Yes. Now, if you remember in the last episode, I actually glued all this together. Yeah, you don't want to do that, because I've got to take it all apart again now. I didn't realise that. Special. So, yeah, I had to go out and buy issues one, two, and three again to, to rebuild this. This is not the one I made in the last episode. However, it's still a bit wobbly. Not at this end, but that end. I've actually got some Tamiya masking tape under there, holding it in place. So, yes. We'll probably sort that out later on if they're a bit wibbly wobbly. That's not the end of the world. We can sort them out later. Uh, anyway, right, so we need to get all this apart. So the first thing we need to do is pop this bit off the end carefully. Take that bit off. Uh, I need to then gently remove the front end here. Taking care of these things. You need to make sure you don't damage these. Pop the end off. And then these two should just come apart thusly. There we go. Lovely. So you can see there. Got a little pluggy in bit. Now, this is what we're gonna have to do here. What you want to do basically is put the fiber optic cable into this hole. So it's touching that LED unit there. However, we're gonna have the same problem with this as we had with R2D2 in that that light's gonna go on and everything forward of this point and the little bit here is going to glow through the plastic. And we're going to have this issue all the way through this build. You have it with any model where there's lighting. So before we can do any of this, we need to take this out. If it comes out, I hope it comes out. Does it come out? Yes, it comes out. I don't know. We'll find out. Come on, out you come. We'll take this back out. From whence it came, if it will come out, it's a very tight fit. Come on, out, there we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to simply paint this bit here. We're going to black this out again to plug the light leak. So on both sides, this bit here, so I'll get myself some paint again. Again, it's not actually paint, I do apologise, it's not paint, it's primer. It's the UMP black primer. Any black paint will do really, I'm just using primer because it's designed to stick to plastic better than paint. But any black paint, acrylic water-based paint, I would recommend. I wouldn't recommend using enamel paint because it takes way too long to dry and you'll be here for days waiting for it to dry. So same again. Get some on that. We're not going to be careful. It's not going to be pretty. Nobody's ever going to see this. So don't worry about making it all nice and pretty. Just get the paint in there. Pr 
primer or whatever you're brushing on up to that line there. Slap it on. Okay, so four coats of that primer later, and that's now light blocked. Four coats on all of it, and then an extra fifth coat on this little bit here, because it wasn't quite blocking light enough. Uh, now let's get this together and see what happens. So this should now be enough to block it sufficiently. Keep in mind, if you are painting this, obviously there's gonna be more primer and paint to go on the outside. So if it's not 100% light blocked, I'm not super upset. I want it to be nicely light blocked, but if there's a little bit, it's not the end of the world. So that goes in there. And then we reassemble the hyzing, the heis. Hyzing, and that goes in there. You could, of course, just Put that through the hole from the other end it would equally stay in place then we need to put this thing back on the end slip the front cap over the fiber now uh, you remember this has only a certain orientation it's got like a little notch there so just slide it along there's some neighbor oh, about three hours ago they started this lawnmower sound and they've still got it going it's constant it's been going for about three i don't know what the hell they're doing how many how many lawns have they got it's like, oh God, how big's your lawn, dude? It's driving me nuts. Middle class suburban nonsense. Right, that needs to go, where's the bottom? There it is. Again, remember to be super careful. You've got two holes here and two little proddy things here. You need to make sure they go in gently. You don't want to stretch them or pressure them because if you do and they snap, you're utterly screwed. So make sure they're in the holes before you push on them. That goes on there. It's a we need to then assert or insert all these bits again. Again, I'm not gluing anything. I'm following the destructions and gluing. Where's the. Okay, the hole gets quite small down there, so. There we go. That needs to go. I'm reluctant to take this on and off too many times purely because it grinds that plastic away and makes it a looser and looser fit each time, so. Next time we take this off, I might just take this off and leave this untouched. So now we have that there. That's nice and firm. This one is still wobbly as all get out, but never mind, we'll fix that some other time. Now I've got the fiber optical cables hanging out the end. That feeds through the end there, like there, to see. Oh, it's got a hole on the end. Ah. Uh, what I shall do is, again, I'll widen the holes a little bit. I want to be able to take this apart if I need to. I shall knock the camera, of course. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna nip the ends of these just very, very slightly. Tiny amount, just 45 degree little nip on the end. If I can get the thingies in, nip like that. And nip like that, there we go. Just means I can take it all apart again without any hassle. Because you don't know how tight some of these parts are quite tight and you don't know if they're too tight you might never ever get them apart again then you'd be really screwed then they go into there like that into the end kaplunk now there is a little square notch here you'll see and there's a little tab there so you just need to make sure they line up apologies if this is out of shot or in the wrong place the key and the lock go together. And then in the end of the light of the laser, we have that little final tiny clear piece that needs to go in the end like this. Please fit and don't fall out. Please be a really tight fit. It's not in any way a tight fit, but it goes in the end. What I will have to do is I'm gonna put this to one side because that's just gonna fall straight out. If you are gonna, well, you will have to put this in. So what I would recommend is, if you're gonna paint this model, if you're not gonna paint this model, if this is as much as you're gonna do, then get yourself some more of that PVA glue or your crystal clear and just glue that in because that's just gonna fall out instantly. If you are gonna paint it, don't do that. Put this to one side, save that somewhere, have a little Ziploc bag for clear parts because there'll probably be more. Put it, I'll put it to one side and I'll have a little bag of all the things. And then once the whole thing is built and the whole thing is painted, I'll glue the little clear part in. So that is now done. That's very, very wobbly. 
So there will be required some remedial work at some point later to fix that. Uh, you can you can't see it on camera, but I'm just twisting the end piece round because this obviously rotates. So you can rotate that to get it lined up nicely. What we need to do is just have a look at the light blocking. So I've unplugged the other piece from the test pack. Uh, if you look at the test pack, there's two little metal pins at the bottom of the socket and there's two little metal pins. You need to make sure you've got the bottom, the pins at the bottom there, line them up the right way, otherwise you'll damage the plug. Plug it in and what you won't see now, because I'm going to turn the lights off, turn the lights off. Lights going off now. So if I can turn that one off, there we go. What you'll see now is there's a light leak here in the middle. Where is it? You can't even see it. Can you even see it? Wow, you can't even see it. Hang on. It's not even showing up on camera. Turn that on. What well, I can see it. You probably can't see it then. There is. Uh, there's a light leak here. This bit's glowing red, but that'll get covered with primer and paint. The whole end of this turret is glowing. You can see that. But again, that will get covered with primer and paint. Keep in mind, the paint on this is really, really thin. It's a light misting. So I'm not fussed about that. That will get covered up with paint and primer. And I'm getting a big glow, which I know you can't really see, but there's a big glow here because it's red. My camera is not really picking up, but the, the whole bit here is glowing. Um, now, I don't think these lights will stay on. I think they just flip on when you, I think you program them and they just go choo 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 like that. So I'm not sure how we're going to fix that. I can't paint inside it, but again, it will have more primer and paint on the top. So I will remain hopeful. I'm not getting any light leaking out of here. That's the important bit. So I will remain hopeful that the, uh, the light leaking we've done, I'll just turn the lights back on again. The light blocking we've done will be sufficient unplug that yeah so we basically we've got light coming out of here this whole pit here we've got light here where there's a piece of plastic at the end of that rod and we've got light leaking through the center part of this bit here i will remain hopeful that all the primer and paint that's to come will cover that up because we've primed, we've we've covered up in there inside as best we can don't want to make it don't want to put too much paint in there because it will jam up the joints but this paint on here the paint that they've put on is like the lightest of light spray coats it's almost nothing i mean literally you can you can scrape it off with your thumbnail so you can certainly get it off of, of the metal um, so i'm pretty confident when we paint this properly we get a load of primer and paint coats and stuff on the outside it'll cover these up nicely and we'll be fixing all these into place permanently and gluing them because that again that's dead wobbly that we'll have to fix that later on but that's all stuff we'll do later in the build because obviously we've got a lot to do. We're going to build it and then we'll paint it. So I'm going to put that to one side. Quite pleased with that. It's look size of it. I mean, look at the size of it. That's just one laser cannon. Oh, I've got four of them. And there's a whole week. This thing's going to be huge, huge. Okay, so last of all, we'll just double check R2. The glue is still curing in there. The glue is still drying. So some of it looks a bit white, the big thick blobs, but some of it's now dry completely and it's completely clear. This little red bit there, you can see, I don't know if you can see it, where the glue's just gone completely clear. Uh, so we'll get his head on. His head just sits on this bit here. There's a peg in the middle. Now it's got a hexagonal shape, so it needs to line up. So you don't want to force it. You just want to splunk it down like that. Well, now if he has the R2 head, yeah, that's it. So I should do it on camera, dear. So what we need to do now is quickly test the lights again. Pew, pew. Lights off. Pew, pew, pew. And we'll turn this one off. Oh. Ugh, it's got a dodgy switch, that light. It's all gone dark. Ready? Three, two, one. Pew. Ooh, yes. Okay, so we do have... Right, well, his head looks fine. Oops, his legs coming out. His head looks fine. The lights are working. It's flicky a bit because I'm not, oh, look at that brilliant orange. I don't know if you'll see it. You won't see any of this. <laughs> there you go. It's looking fine to me. Right, so yes, that's working absolutely fine. The light is coming through the head. All the lights on the head. There is some light leak between the body and the head because of course, if I can get this off again, what it's doing is this lamp is lighting up in here and this rod and it's lighting up the inside of that so you are getting a little sort of gap where there's a gap between the top of the head of the dome and this the collar 
there is a bit of a little tiny tiny light leak I think basically this lip here I'll paint on the inside a couple of coats just to sort of light see I'm not going to paint on the outside because I don't want to jam it up this the works because that needs to go on there uh, and also I need to do something with this damn leg oh, this this bit falling off all the time I may have to just glue that I think because it's going to drive me bonkers bonkataculars Anyway, I'll put that there. So that is everything done for issue four. So what I'm going to do, we've got the light there. Uh, we've got the, sorry, the laser cannon there. Massive hugeness. I'll sort R2's little bit of a light leak out. But that's where we're going to leave it, I think. And we finish the cockpitty bit. There's the, they've not, I've zoomed in too far now. Look, oh, it's just too much bigness. I'll put him on there. There you go. R2 may have fallen down and he's had a bit of a fall down and he's, he's not very well. So I'll have to go and have a look at him. But yeah, we'll get him sorted anyway that's going to do us for this episode thank you very much for sticking with it now like i said at the start i'm not a regular subscriber to this i haven't received the magazines as they normally go out they say it's going to be five issues every five weeks and i of course got issue one and two and then a few weeks later got issues three and four so i don't know how it's working or when i'm going to get the next ones or whether i'll just get issue five or issue five to ten i don't know and i'm assuming i'm going to get more so assuming that i will see you for the next episode where we'll carry on with whatever i get before I go, of course, I do need to give three little quick shout outs to all the people who make this channel and what I do possible. First and foremost, my lovely, lovely patrons over on my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash model making guru. They financially support me and my channel and the work I do. Uh, I love them to bits. They keep the bills paid. They keep the lights on. They allow me to do this as my full time job. So thank you. Massive, massive thank you to my Patreon supporters. Of course, I've also got some channel sponsors. Emodels.co.uk are my official channel sponsors. Uh, they are your one stop shop for all your model making needs, traditional model making, your tools, your paints, your kits, cars, planes, trains, tanks, wartime stuff, that kind of thing. They're the people to go to with up to 10% off RRP on everything in stock. Massive savings to be had. And they're lovely, lovely people. They'll ship kind of to most places. And of course, Goblin Gaming, my good friends over at Goblin Gaming, where you can save up to 20% off all Games Workshop, all Malifaux and all Conflict 47 products and massive savings on everything else. For all your tabletop gaming and model making needs, go to Goblin Gaming. Don't just go to the website though. Use the link that's in the description below this video. Not only will it get you those massive savings, it'll also tell you that I sent you and therefore I'll get a little bit of commission if you shop through that link in the description below this video. Anyway, that's going to do us. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. See you for the next one. Hopefully, please, 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 Diagostini. See you for the next one. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. You there. You. I can see you with my painty stained finger. Painty stained finger. Look, painty stained. I shall say, adios amoebas. <laughs>